Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. Now, what really happened in this fight? I cannot believe I'm saying that, but first of all, I thought Mike Tyson won the fight. I thought he won the scorecards. I gave him six rounds out of the eight, but ultimately they scored it as a draw. The first judge had it a clear draw. The second judge had it for Mike Tyson. The third judge had it for Roy Jones Jr. And frankly, the third judge was Vinny Pazienza, who fought Roy Jones back in the day, so maybe there was a little bit of bias there. I could potentially see a draw, a 76-76 scorecard, as Chad Dawson had it, or I could see Mike Tyson winning. I do not see how Roy Jones won this fight. But this fight exceeded all expectations. Both guys were surprisingly a lot better than a lot of people would have thought a 54 and a 51 year old would be. Mike Tyson was still moving on the angles. Roy Jones Jr. using his speed, clowning around in there a little bit, getting in Mike Tyson's head a bit, and Tyson still using the same kind of head movement, going to the body, comboing head to body. And the most surprising thing to me was the fact that Mike Tyson was in such good shape he went through the whole eight rounds and didn't really look that tired. Whereas Roy Jones Jr. definitely was gassing out and the body shots from Tyson were the big reasons for that. Tyson was slip and ripped to the body with a left hook. He'll find a lot of body shots from the clinch where Roy Jones Jr. constantly was going to. It's something almost all of Mike Tyson's previous opponents have done. Whenever he comes in on them, they have to break the pressure by smothering it, clinching up with him so the ref can disengage and they go back into a neutral position. But ultimately, the body shots in the clinch from Mike Tyson made this strategy of clinching up with Tyson backfire a bit because not only is he grappling and holding on to the bigger man, but also he's getting body shot like crazy while he's just trying to hold on for the ref to break it up. Unfortunately for him, the ref allowed it to fight in the clinch a bit, which favored Tyson throughout the fight. He was the more aggressive guy, he was being active in the clinch whereas Roy Jones was not and that bit Roy a bit. But a lot of times when the fight went to the clinch, Mike Tyson was turning Roy Jones into the ropes. So it's a battle of position, a battle of who's going to be on the ropes. Whoever's on the ropes is going to be a disadvantage in this fight. So Roy was trying to use the clinch as a way to get Mike Tyson to the ropes because from a striking distance, he was not able to pressure Tyson at all. So he thought maybe in the clinch, I could probably push him up here and use my range, use my speed, keeping Tyson on the ropes. But before Roy is able to push him completely to the ropes, Tyson using his strength and using the underhook just rotates Roy right into the ropes. And from there, Mike had a very good ability to cut off the ring. He was intercepting Roy Jones with the left hook to the body. He knew that every time Roy moved laterally, he would move to his own right, which is to the left side of Mike Tyson. So Mike would always try to intercept him with that left hook consistently. But there was something a little bit alarming for Roy Jones Jr. And it was the fact that it seemed like he was a little bit tentative in the fight, giving Mike Tyson a little bit too much respect of his power. He would react hugely to Tyson's feints and just his slips. If he slipped Roy Jones' jab, Roy would backstep and retreat all the way back, right? He didn't want to do anything with Tyson's counter hooks. But with that movement, ultimately, Roy Jones was able to keep a really good reach, a really good range onto Mike Tyson. Even though Tyson tried to counter the jab with the left hook, Roy Jones is able to always back up and keep his reach onto Tyson and connect with the left hook counter shots a few times. And not only was that left hook really good for a pull counter, but later on in the fight, Roy Jones was finding that the left hook was actually a very good weapon against Mike Tyson's tendency, specifically his inside slip to left hook tendency. It's a big sequence from Mike Tyson. He's famous for that sequence. So Roy Jones Jr. knew if I throw a one, two, he's going to slip on the inside of the jab and also on the outside of the straight right. Ultimately, he has to bob his way back into position to come in for that left hook. So Roy Jones 1-2-3, chaining up his left hook after the jab and straight right, is going to counter Mike Tyson's head movement every time. And you saw whenever he went to it, it would either connect on Tyson, all according to calculation, or it would just be a little bit too short. And ultimately, it's not that Tyson got his head away from it, like he didn't move his head back. It's the fact that just Roy did not gauge the distance in time, right? In fact, Tyson would move his head into that left hook. And even when Roy Jones switched it up and went with a 2-3-2-3, two, three, two, three, straight right, left hook, straight right, left hook, Tyson would try to slip his head on the inside of the right straight, causing him to move his head into the left hook. He would duck down to enter into Roy Jones, but then the second left hook would have again intercepted his head movement, but he just fell too short with it. And there would be other sequences where Roy was stepping with a jab, Tyson would slip on the outside of it to throw his right hand counter shot. When he throws his right hand, he brings his back foot forward, which means he's overcommitting into it, and Roy would pull on the punch, backstepping off of his jab to try to connect with the check left hook, but again, he miscalculates his distance there. But it's the correct punch, it's the correct counter, it's the correct sequence for him to connect on Mike Tyson. So this means for the last three rounds, Roy Jones Jr. 
was getting down the head movement of Mike Tyson, even though he was gassing out in the fight. And not only that, you saw in the eighth round where Roy Jones taunted in front of Mike Tyson. Tyson got mad and it looked like he was going to throw a kick or something. And Roy starts playing with his head again. He throws in a look away jab. Tyson slips his head on the inside, tries to counter with the right hand, and he moves completely forward, over committing for his attack. Roy slips on the outside of the right hand and tries to counter with a left hook and ultimately connects on the body before clinching up. Now, I know a lot of people are going to go into hypothetical mode and say, you know, if they fought in their prime, looking at this, maybe Roy Jones would have an advantage in their primes. You know, if the fight starts playing out a bit, he would get the feeling of Mike Tyson's head movement a bit earlier if they fought for three-minute rounds, and he would have probably countered with these counter left hooks on Tyson with more power, more speed, and all that stuff. But then again, it's all hypothetical. But ultimately, the body of work from Tyson was degrading Roy Jones' speed and taking off some of the power from Roy's shots. And there were some really good moments in the fight here. So right here in the second round, Mike Tyson starts gauging on Roy Jones. Instead of attacking like he was before and after all this, he starts to really feel out of what Roy Jones was trying to do here and see where he can finally find that big shot on him. So Tyson gets into the parallel stance and reaches with his left hand. Roy, with his reach advantage, tries to land that long-range jab and then retreats afterward. And he retreats actually to his left side, which is a little bit different than what he usually did. So Tyson slips on the outside and enters into the southpaw position. Sees the look-away jab from Roy Jones. It's crazy to think that he's throwing punches like this. He's not even looking. He's throwing these shots. And Tyson's closing in on him. So Roy hops into the jab and pushes and moves away as Tyson slips on the outside of it and looks like he was going to throw a right hook, but it's only a feint. It causes Roy to pull back a bit and he goes and throws a jab and tries to escape to that right side. Mike Tyson ducks under the jab and reaches forward with his left hand to gauge the distance, but Roy intelligently switches it to orthodox, so now his left hand is going to be the lead and ultimately going to be the measuring stick now. He also puts a right guard up and moves away that side. But here's the thing, Tyson saw that his feint worked. If he makes a giant movement, Roy Jones is going to react heavily. So that's what Tyson does. He hops forward and ducks under the jab that he sees coming, and he rises up and sees Roy Jones' big reaction to it he ducks like a bomb got thrown at him or something and almost in panic or because his eyes are off Tyson doesn't know what's gonna come at him he reaches forward to clinch up it's the safest approach to stop anything Tyson's going to do but look at Tyson he sees the whole movement from beginning to end before he reacts he sees that Roy is reaching forward with his left hand so he connects over the shoulder digs in all the way with a right overhand and connects clean on Roy Jones jr this is the biggest shot that Mike landed in the entire fight and credit to Roy Jones people were knocking his chin and he took this very well but here's a good moment for Roy Jones Jr. at the end of the sixth round so he's in his low stance which always means he's going to jump into something he's gonna pop up quick for an attack whether he retreats after he takes an angle after or he just goes forward and clinches up it's always a speculation because he does all of that stuff they're all very different and you never know what he's going to do because of how fast he usually is but what he does here he faints on Mike Tyson and Tyson takes it he slips to his right Roy takes the outside foot advantage given that they're on opposite stance he throws in a jab. Now what this does is it keeps Tyson's head in position. Tyson noticed that the jab was coming after he slipped to his right and he's not going to bob his head back because he's going to get hit by the jab. So he keeps his head in position and he's just going to counter from there. He does not see Roy's left hand. It just speaks to the speed of Roy Jones. So by Roy doing this, he keeps the target in the same place and connects with a hopping in left uppercut. Mike Tyson eats it and tries to counter with a right straight, but because Roy took the outside foot and the fact that he hopped into that same direction, he's going to be completely out of line of sight from that right straight and he just clinches up. So amazing fight, very fun to watch, and I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. And if you did, make sure to thumbs up. If you enjoyed my content, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.